So a few weeks ago, I asked my followers on Instagram to help me out with some video suggestions, and they were all fantastic ideas, and I might actually use some of them in future videos. But one in particular stood out, and that was a video on some of the rarest BMWs that exist. I figured since I'm a huge BMW fan, and a lot of my subscribers are too, well, why not? So today I'll be showing you guys five rare BMW cars you've probably never heard of and may never actually get to see in real life. First one on the list is the BMW M3 CRT. At a quick glance, it may seem like an ordinary E90 M3, but if you look a little closer, you'll notice the unique frozen silver paint job, the small red accents found on the hood vents, the front diffuser and fender emblems, and the four unique bucket seats found in the interior. And yes, rare passengers also got bucket seats. What really made the CRT different from the rest was the use of carbon fiber throughout the car, hence the name CRT, which stands for Carbon Racing Technology. At the time, carbon fiber reinforced plastic, which was used on the M3 CRT was rare and very expensive to make and it wasn't until the BMW i3 and i8 where BMW used it much more widely. BMW's goal was to shave off as much weight as possible with the M3 CRT since carbon fiber can be just as strong as steel but at a quarter of the weight. They managed to decrease the overall weight of the car by around 154 pounds. May not sound like much but when you combine the weight reduction with the 4.4 liter V8 found in the BMW GTS, Oh, it makes a huge difference. Producing 450 horsepower at 8,300 RPM and 324 pound-feet of torque and having a top speed of 180 mile per hour, which was limited by the way, this car really meant business. Essentially, the M3 CRT is the sedan version of the M3 GTS, but much more rare. 135 fire orange colored M3 GTS models were made while only 67 M3 CRTs were made, and get this, none of them were sold here in the United States. Only two of them are reported to be in the United States, federalized for show and display use. They can be legally driven in the states for no more than 2,500 miles a year. I actually remember one of the two in the US being sold a year or two back for around $300,000. Honestly, it's hard to believe that someone would pay so much for such a car, but let's look at it this way. Only 67 of them were built, which makes them one of the rarest BMWs that exists. And if you own one in the US, then you'd be pretty much owning one out of two. The question is, if you had the money, would you buy one for $300,000? Second car is the BMW M5 Touring E61. I'm sure many, if not all of you know about the E60 M5, either because of its beautiful exhaust sound or because it's one of the most unreliable BMW cars to ever exist. But how many of you knew there's a wagon version that exists? BMW only had two M5 Tourings over the course of the model's history, the E30 and the E61. That alone makes them extremely rare. The E61 M5 is essentially a copy and paste of the E60 M5, but with the practicality of a wagon, of course. On paper, this has to be one of the most exciting wagons to have ever been released. It has it all, except reliability, of course. Being that it's a wagon, it's extremely practical. Seats 5, grocery runs are a walk in the park, and comes equipped with a massive F1 inspired 5 liter V10 that produces 500 horsepower and 383 pound feet of torque. Its top speed is 155 miles per are limited, but if the limiter is removed, it can go over 200 miles an hour. Some saying someone reaching an insane top speed of 207 miles per hour on the Autobahn. If that's true, that's faster than a McLaren 570S. The M5's engine screams with its nearly 9,000 RPM redline, and the sound the M5 produces is orgasmic. I actually made a video a while back on some of the best sound and production cars, and the M5 is one of the cars I included. I'll link it down in the description below if you guys want to check that video out later. 0 to 60 for the M5 Torn is around 4.5 seconds. A half a second slower than the sedan version but either way it's very fast and can easily be a sleeper in my eyes <laughs> if it runs all right enough with the reliability jokes sadly just like the m3 crt the e91 m5 torn was not sold here in the united states mainly because well Americans don't seem to have a big interest in wagons. It's a damn shame. My guess is if you had the courage and opportunity to get your hands on an M5 Touring and hold on to it for the long haul, it may be worth a lot in the future. Only 1,025 of them were built, and dare I say it looks better than the sedan version. Third car on the list is the BMW Z8 Alpina, also known as the Alpina Roadster V8. It was first released in 2003, a year after the regular Z8 came out. Alpina wanted to add a very distinctive twist to the supercar like Z8. While the regular Z8 focused more on hard-nosed performance, the goal for the Alpina Z8 was to have more of an emphasis on Grand Touring. The 6-speed manual was swapped out for a 5-speed ZF automatic transmission, the suspension was tuned to be more comfortable, the run-flat tires were replaced with more conventional tires with softer sidewalls, and they added 20-inch wheels for cool factor. Engine-wise, the original plan was to insert a massive V12 into the Roadster, but the engine bay room was an issue, so Alpina ultimately decided to go with a 4 
1.8 liter V8 from their 5 series base B10 V85. While it produced less horsepower than the original Z8 at only 375 horsepower, it did produce more low end torque at 384 pound feet of torque, which is exactly what Alpina wanted. Inside, it's very easy to tell apart from other Z8s. They have a individually numbered plaque, blue instrument cluster dials, a display that shows the gear selection, and unique interior stitching. While some may not like the looks of the Z8 Alpina, I actually dig it, especially when it comes to the interior. The Z8 is already a very rare car that was only produced in limited numbers, 555 units in total, 450 of them sold in the US, and out of all of them, only 28 of them were tweaked by Alpina. And if you had the opportunity to buy one back in the day, the starting price was around $138,000, which believe it or not, was a bargain compared to what they sell for today. Most well-maintained regular Z8s are selling for over $200,000, while the Alpina versions are selling close to $300,000. This next car is an honorable mention because while it's very limited and rare, most car enthusiasts know about it primarily because it was featured on both Need for Speed Most Wanted and Carbon the BMW M3 GTR E46. First of all, it was the first M3 in the history of BMW to feature a V8 engine. While many of you may recognize the M3 GTR, you may not know why it even exists. In a nutshell, at the time when the M3 GTR was introduced at the Le Mans racing, Porsche was wiping the floor with everyone and the M3 GTR was the answer for BMW to come out ahead. They were tired of seeing Porsche win. Here's the thing, Porsche complained because the V8 engine found in the M3 GTR was not found in a production car, which according to Le Mans rules, would disqualify such an engine. Entry. So what does BMW do? They went and produced 10. That's right, only 10 road version BMW GTRs were created, which was the minimum at the time to allow them to race without issues. The road version ones were detuned compared to the track one, producing 380 horsepower compared to 493 horsepower. The racetrack version was kicking Porsches behind and the road version one was an extremely rare and desirable piece of art. Shortly after the Le Mans rules changed, stating that 100 production M3 GTRs would have to be made and a dozen of the same engines. A dozen of those engines would be very expensive to produced, so that's where BMW closed the curtains on the M3 GTR racing at the Le Mans. The BMW M3 GTR E46 is truly a legendary car, just seeing one in person, not even owning one would be a phenomenal experience. Fourth car is a BMW M3 pickup truck, only two of them were created by BMW, an E30 version and an E90X version. Neither of them were produced for the public, but more so used to transport parts within the M division facility. BMW used the E30 version for 26 years before they decided to retire it in 2012, and that's when the modern one came into play. BMW decided to pull a prank on enthusiasts and use the pickup truck as an April Fool's joke, and man was it well executed. BMW purposely placed the M3 pickup truck on the iconic Nürburgring track, knowing that many spy shots would be captured as a result. Pictures started to surface all over the web, racking up excitement. BMW even went as far as releasing a press release for it. I've read it myself and it sounded very convincing, only for it to all be a cruel joke. Well played, BMW. All it ended up being was a one-off and used as a workshop transport like the previous M3 pickup. Building it was not a challenging task for BMW as it started off as a convertible E93 version, so strengthening elements already were added to the body. Not only was this variation of the M3 more practical and can haul up to 992 pounds of cargo, but it was also 150 pounds lighter than the Coupe E92 M3. Combine that with the same 4 liter V8 engine producing 420 horsepower and this pickup truck was a performance machine. It looks pretty damn cool, it would fit perfectly in the Australian market as a distinctive M3 UTE. There's actually a tuning shop in South Africa that replicated this with an E92 M3, it's apparently the only supercharged M3 pickup truck in the world. Fifth and last car is the BMW Bauer E21. And yes, there was a 3 series available before the E30. Only two body styles were available for the E21 platform, a coupe version which is the one everyone bought, and a rather interesting and unique convertible version thanks to Bauer, a coach builder in Germany. Bauer had a long history with BMW so they decided to team up with them and make the convertible 3 series. But see, the E21 Bauer wasn't using a convertible top most of us are familiar with. To be honest, it was rather weird and quirky. They essentially shaved off the top of an E21 coupe and reinforced an engineered rigidity to the top since it was not meant to be a convertible. The result was a rather strange one. The top panel comes off as you would expect but the A, B and C pillars remain in place. And since the top laid on the trunk and not inside of it, practicality remained the same which was actually a good thing because that means it wouldn't limit cargo room whether the top was on or off. The E21 was essentially a BMW with a hat. 
As far as I know, the convertible treatment was given to all engine variants of the E21. 4,595 units were made with the convertible treatment. Compared to the other BMW cars featured on this list, it doesn't seem as exclusive, but I'm sure many of you guys have probably never heard of it. I'll be honest, I didn't even know it existed until recently where a friend of mine mentioned it to me. The E21 Bauer in a way paved the future for BMW convertible cars. Bauer actually continued to modify the 3 Series all the way through the E30 and E36 generations. So, were you previously aware of the BMW cars that I featured on this video? Yes? No? Let me know in the comment section below. I really do hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, make sure and hit that like button. It does have a huge positive impact on my videos and it's free to do and it takes a second to do so hit that like button. Also, if you're not already subscribed and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe with notifications on that way you don't miss out on my next video. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.